Hey team, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing channel, jrbtreeclimbing.com. This is also the name of my Facebook group and my Patreon, should you wish to support me in my journey with safe climbing. I'd like to show you how to tie and everything I know about the Hedden knot, including how to build a non-mechanical and very reliable uh, hand ascender out of nothing but cordage and a carabiner. The head and knot would have been, uh, and it's referred to by some as the head and hitch, but the name is the head and knot. It is a hitch. It's a friction hitch, more specifically, that's used to create a movable point of attachment between a rope and a piece of cordage or webbing. So the first thing I want you to know about the headin is the only real disadvantage, and that is that you cannot count on being able to break the headin under load. So if you found yourself in either a climbing situation or if you're, if you're using the headin as a backup, like I like to use in a climbing situation, and you found that that backup was needed and you found your weight on the head and do not count on being able to break this under load. That won't be possible. You will need a plan for unloading the head in in order to transition into the next part of your climb, likely a rappel. And I've got some information on my, on my channel on how to do that, but I wanted you to be aware of that, of that one disadvantage. In terms of advantages of the headin, there are many. First and foremost, it's one of a handful of hitches which can be tied with a Prusik loop or, um, in this case, a web sling. Not all friction hitches which work with a Prusik loop also work with a sling, but the headin does. Uh, of hitches you're, you may be aware of that work with the Prusik loop, first and foremost, there's the Prusik, and the headin delivers a, uh, a similar hold characteristic to the Prusik, but just in one direction. You also might be familiar with the Klemheist, you might be familiar with the Autoblock, you might be familiar with the Bachmann. Well, fifth in popularity, but, but first in my book on that list is the headin, and I'll show you how to to tie it. It's very easy to tie. So let's just get started with that. Let's dive in a little bit here and let's watch me tie this. So the first point is I'm going to take this Prusik loop and the far right where my right thumb is, that's going to be the load bearing portion. I'll make sure that the sewn portion of the Prusik loop is not going to interfere with either the assumption of load nor the construction of the hitch itself. So the working end will be here on my right and the left end will be the standing part. I'm going to place that over the rope so that just a small bite extends over the left side. And I'm going to make three trips around the back. I'm going to coil upwards in the Z or right-handed chirality. I'll make three trips around the back. That's one, that's two, and that's three. Now you will see some other videos where folks are only going around twice. In my testing, <clears throat> three should be the standard. Yes, two might be okay for some ropes and some cords, and you can always go down, you can always go up if you need it. But I think three should be the, the standard to provide the kind of hold we want. And now the last point here is how do we, we run these two together? And this is the only real mistake you can make, and sometimes we might even make it on purpose. I might be apt to simply, because it's easier to tie this way, take this and drop it through from top to bottom. But that's, that's not how it's properly formed. It's properly formed, if we look at the way these two lines come together, they touch tips in this fashion as it comes around the back, that's how it passes through. So that's a properly formed head in. And so I'll dress that out so I don't have any overlap, right? We don't want it. We don't want it like that. I'll inspect it. There's, there's, there's no overlap. It's as neat as possible. And it immediately takes load. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> here in lie the last two properties. It has, um, you know, not only being easy to tie, but easy to dress, easy to inspect, but takes load immediately. And it's got a minimum expansion profile. Here's, here I'm moving it with just two fingers easily. I can immediately hammer on that. I can throw my body weight on there and it will hold immediately without any kind of redressing. It holds its shape well. 
and I will show you applications where that is optimal. First, let's tie it one more time. Place the bite across the rope and I, again you could tie this in the opposite chirality I'll try to remain consistent and use the right-handed place the bite around the rope three trips around the back that's one two three and now as these the working and the standing part meet as they meet I'm not going over the top I pass the working through the standing and I'm able to get that dressed with no fanfare all right now let's watch the same exercise but in webbing easy to tie so it's easy to untie right you could do this blindfolded and in, in the dark if we needed to same deal I'm going to make sure I choose the sewn portion of the of the sling where it's not going to affect my tie I'll place a portion over and I will make three trips around the back one two just being careful not to add any so I placed it around I placed it over the rope here. This was the first tripper on the back. One, two, three. Three trips around the back. Three full revolutions. And now, in the same fashion, pass the working end through the standing part as they met. It's a little bit more dressing here. A little bit more dressing but relatively easy and takes load immediately. Okay, so now I'd like to show you right away one of my favorite applications for the head in, and that is the use of the head in as a backup. So here I have a mechanical hand ascender. This could be any mechanical device, right? You don't need this device, could be anything, but you're, you're a climber or you're a saddle hunter and you have a mechanical device and you want to provide some backup for it. So let me put this ascender on the, on the line. And as you climb or, or during your hunt, if you're a saddle hunter, if you have a head and knot and you place it above the ascender, well, during a climb, as you advance the ascender, no matter what kind of ascender it is, it'll push that up. If at any time you exercise a load here, it's just ready. I have done... I have done climbs uh, to the length of my rope, so I'm going off uh, the bottom of the view here, where I just set this at the bottom with a simple tug, and then I never have to touch that again. I will just advance this all the way up. It just holds its shape perfectly. And at the top of my climb, I've tested, all right, what if, what if I just uh, had a catastrophic failure here, where this, this device just disappeared? That head in just always seems to hold. And so I really like it in a backup situation. I also like to use this in different rigging scenarios. I will be showing you next an opportunity to use the head in in the creation of a three to one mechanical advantage ratchet strap effectively. And I use this to attach my platform or climbing stick to a tree. So we'll be using the head in for that. It's also useful at any place you're using a Prusik today where you don't need the bi-directional hold properties of the Prusik and you simply, uh, you, know, you know what direction you want to hold, you can use a, a head in. So I think we may see that, for example, on adjustable bridges in the future. And I will point out that there, although it's not advertised as having bi-directional hold, when you research the head in, you'll find out that it's sometimes referred to as an upside down clem heist. Well, what do I mean? Well, if I, instead of pulling down, if I pulled up on this, it, it seems to hold. But if I just put a little slack in the rope, in the cords there, and allow that bite to fall, it turns out that I am now pulling upward on a clem heist. So the clem heist and the head in 
are effectively the same, just oriented uh, a different way, just oriented 180 degrees different. That is a Klemheist. So we actually do have bidirectional hold here. And this has a, a, this is a little easier to break than the, than the headed and a little less stable. So let's turn it back into a headend. Okay, now, now we're going to enter masterclass mode and show you a couple of other details. So the first is, you know, I might not be working with the loop, right? I might not be working with a closed loop. I might be working with just a length of cord. Well, if the cord is already closed in a bend, if it's already closed in a bend, it's pretty obvious I would tie it the same way. But I'm just working with a length of cord and I want to tailor the length of that as, as per my application. Well, I can form the head in first, so I'm going to take a length of five feet of cord. I don't know how much I need exactly, and I'll just offset the ends so that, that they're a few inches apart. And I'm going to form a head in, so place the bite over the rope. We'll go real time here, one trip, two trips, three trips around the back. Then bring this, the two working ends through. So I have a head in there. And so let's say I want, you know, just this much space. I just want a few, a few inches or centimeters of room here. Well, then I'll, I'll create a bend here. And this is one of the reasons I love the Hunter's Bend. You can see my prior video on the Hunter's Bend because I can form that right here and I can tune that loop. What I run it, I want it right about there. You get to be pretty good over time. And, gauging how much this will stretch out after we form our hunter's bend. Yes, the hunter's bend might not be quite as strong as a double or triple fisherman's, but for a non-slack climbing application, I hate to say it, but we really don't need that kind of strength. We, uh, it's more important to have a uh, reliable hitch that we can tie and untie and, and set and tune. So you won't see me uh, carrying a lot of these. I don't really carry one of these. I might carry a web sling. I'm more likely to have uh, a length of cord. I might have a hunter's bend in it, but in that light, I can change the size of it much easier. Okay, so now let's talk about how we create a hand ascender. So this is, this is, um, and I've designed a number of hand ascenders in my climbing career. And of all of them, this one is the most reliable. So we're going to build a device like this, but we're going to build it out of cordage. And I have a few to show you. Okay, so here are three variants. On the right, I have a standard heading like I just showed you, and I have closed it using my longhorn hitch. And what this does is the longhorn hitch serves as both of, as a bend for joining the two ends of rope, but also a stable uh, tending point where I can, I can tend this and push that up. And I formed this with a, a standard head in. The, the only problem with it is, especially with stiff cord, and let's let's dive in a little bit and see if I can get this to happen. It's possible to to shove those cords up inside of there and then see what happened. It didn't provide the, the hold. It's not holding right now because I introduced a little slack here. I'll take that back out. It's fine. And I can load it. But see, I got it to 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 go. It's it's uh, I need a little bit more resistance here. OK, so that so that intending this can go up and push that up. So now I can, I can leverage different properties of the head in. So what I did here on, in the blue is I, I, I misformed the head in. I created a head in, but I intentionally, instead of forming it properly, bringing these ends through, I brought these down over the front because it's a little bit more jammy, jams up a little bit more under load. It's a little uh, stiffer to move. And with that, I was able to create a fairly reliable hand ascender. And I, I just executed an SRT climb on this. But 
it's brand new cord and it's it's uh, and so you know it's not fully broken in the hold was decent it uh there were a couple of times where you know it gave an inch or so before it bit and i've done uh a, a, a lot of testing on this before making this video and this is my favorite variant and so i'm going to show you how to build this so what this is is uh it it's a hand ascender obviously made out of nothing but cord and a carabiner and what i have here is a four turn heading with a bull hitch incorporated inside of it a bull hitch is incorporated inside of it and then it's closed with the long horn okay let's build one of these because it is super reliable i can i can just climb forever on that and get great results okay so here we go I'm going to start by forming a, a bull hitch. So I'll t I have five feet of cord here, five feet of six millimeter cord on three eighths inch or 9.5 millimeter rope. A bull hitch, and I've got a prior video on this, is simply a girth hitch. And then I take one loop, fold it under the other, and go around 360 degrees. That's a bull hitch. Everyone really should know how to form a bull hitch. It's so useful in a number of applications. And I'm going to build a head and knot, but instead of placing just a bite over, I want to place these two loops over, right? And so this is going to start the formation of what's effectively a head and knot. So I'll place this there, and I'm going to go up and around. And I, I like to make this extra secure. Uh, the the it, there's a little less um, resistance here. I like to go around four times. You can always back it off to three, but I'm going to go around four four times. It's three or four depending on your on your rope and cord. But let's just go ahead and use four. So that was one trip around the back. That's the second trip around the back. Third trip around the back. Fourth trip around the back. And then I bring two working ends through. Now, let's get this set. The bull hitch has to get set first. This is a little complex to tie. This isn't something we'd necessarily tie for every climb. This is a device we'd like to tie and then leave on our line. For example, a saddle hunter who's using MRS, or sometimes called DRT, climbing system, but wants a hand ascender to help uh, with, the, with the pulling. Well, this is a great way to do it with a non-mechanical solution. All right. so. I, I've got that on there, and we can inspect that. We've got this really nice symmetry with two bars, horizontal, two vertical, and two passing through. I've got no points of overlap. So that's it. Let's, let's hammer on that, get it set really nice, moves. It's, it's stiff but reliable. Okay. Now, if it were too stiff, I could always back off a couple of turns. And now I'm going to form a longhorn hitch on the bottom. So this will likely lose you unless you're already uh, well versed in tying the longhorn. I'm just going to be tying it upside down relative to what you may have seen before and on a minimal slack profile. So I'm going to put my carabiner here and I'm going to form a longhorn hitch right here. And how do I form a longhorn hitch? Well, I'm going to take the strand on the right and I'm going to go around 360 degrees. Let's take the strand on the left, go around the front, and around 360 degrees. You can see I'm carefully holding these because if I let go, they'll, they'll disappear and I'll have to reform it. And now, still working with the strand on my left, I'll pass it through or under the, the two strands in the front of the carabiner. And I'll do the same with the other side. And in the, in the matter I've done this, I've got the same number of crossing points over and unders with these two strands. And the, the last thing I do is take both of these and pass them down under these two strands. So again, the longhorn hitch is something that I have introduced. It is extremely strong. And you can consider it both a hitch and a bend, provided that the uh, 
load is being placed in a unidirectional fashion like this handle will provide. So that's the Longhorn. Again, I'm going to hammer on that. Now what's one of the properties of the Longhorn that you're aware of? I'm going to remove the carabiner and these two loops here are expandable, right? I can, I can expand them. Expand them. So let's get them out as far as I can. And, you know, I tied this really compact, but there's enough slack that I can straddle the rope. See what I did there? I straddled the rope with my longhorn. And now I'm going to take the carabiner and I'm going to place it around. It's going to capture the going to capture both strands and the rope. And without any further dressing, I just hammer on that and I've got a hand ascender. Now, I can tell from experience that, you know, this this might be overkill. I probably didn't need the fourth one, but I wanted to make sure to weave that into this video as you're tying and tuning your own hitches. If you decide you need another turn, feel free to engage it. Um, but this is super reliable and the fact that this bull hitch binds down and holds these two lines makes it fold better see how that's folding instead of shoving these two lines up it's 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 a, a bit of an accordion and so that makes the that make, just makes it operate so much more uh reliably okay so i guess i'll just leave you with one more tie to make sure you got it Here's the head and knot. One, two, three. All right, so put that in your toolbox, tie and try, and I will be showing you next how we can really use this in some cool rigging scenarios. And first up will be how to reliably attach our platform to a tree. And I can do that now really reliably, even with nothing under my feet. I'm just swinging from a climbing rope. And with the head in, in my rig, I can get that climbing uh, platform or stick attached to the tree very reliably and secure. Thank you very much, as always, for your support.